Hey everyone, Arthur Sulowski here from SOS Physiotherapy in Kitchener, Waterloo. SOS has been helping people like you move towards better health for over 30 years. If you've come to this video, you're likely thinking to yourself, is there really a point when it comes to acupuncture? Well, acupuncture has been used for centuries to treat a wide variety of aches, ailments, and pains. Common treatments include everything from headaches and nausea to sports injuries and back pain. Now, you might not think that getting poked with a needle would actually relieve some of your pain, but some people have life-changing improvements after acupuncture and dry needling. So, do they really work? If so, how do they work? But more importantly, are they safe? And do they hurt? In this video, we'll answer all those questions and more while discussing the current research on acupuncture and dry needling. So, let's get started. A reminder that the information discussed in this video is purely informative and should not be used as a replacement for consultation with a healthcare professional. We should begin by defining the terms acupuncture and dry needling. While the terms are often used interchangeably, they are actually two unique and individual therapeutic techniques. Both acupuncture and dry needling involve the insertion of a needle into body tissue, most commonly muscle. Depending on the technique and the area being treated, the needles vary in size and length. The term acupuncture is most commonly used to describe a technique that has its origins in traditional Chinese medicine, whereas dry needling is often considered a more recent subset of acupuncture. A clinician performing dry needling, or trigger point dry needling as it's also called, will feel around for a tight band of muscle, known as a trigger point. The clinician will then insert the needle directly into this tight or tender spot. The needle might be left in, or the clinician might move the needle around in what is known as pistoning or sparrow pecking. The focus of this video will largely be on the more modern approach of dry needling. However, a lot of the topics discussed will also be applicable to more traditional Chinese acupuncture. But for now, let's get back to our main questions. Starting with, is dry needling effective? Some people have such great results with dry needling, it often almost seems like magic. But does science support this technique? A systematic review conducted by researchers Geishi and colleagues compiled studies that investigated the effects of dry needling on various conditions such as low back pain, neck pain, fibromyalgia, and more. After examining these articles, the authors concluded that dry needling performed by physical therapists is more effective than no treatment or sham treatment dry needling for reducing pain, improving a patient's pain pressure threshold, and improving functional outcomes up to 12 weeks following treatment, lending some credibility to those who swear by dry needling. This is just one of many studies that similarly support the use of dry needling. However, despite all the positive research there is out there, there are some studies that have less clear outcomes. Uh, additionally, there aren't very many articles that actually examine the long-term benefits of dry needling. So, while we can be confident that dry needling is an effective technique, we can't always expect magic. So it looks like the research does support the use of dry needling as an effective treatment technique. But is there a scientific explanation for how the technique works? There actually seems to be a few explanations. Some scientists suggest that dry needling has its effect by releasing your body's natural pain relieving substances as well as some other factors, including white blood cells, that help promote healing. In addition to stimulating the release of these helpful substances, it is also suggested that dry needling might help reduce the upregulation of the sympathetic nervous system. This just means it might help reduce the fight or flight response, promoting mental and physical relaxation. One other explanation of dry needling is that it actually has the proposed mechanical benefit of disrupting and decreasing the presence of pain-causing trigger points and muscle knots. 
Great. So the research suggests that dry needling is an effective technique, and there's a scientific explanation for how it all works. But now for the big question. Is it safe? A study conducted by Boyce et al. investigated the frequency at which unpleasant or harmful events occur following dry needling treatments performed by physical therapists. They found that over the 20,000 dry needling treatments observed, only 20 significant events occurred. Additionally, over the 20 events observed, none had serious long-term implications. What this means is that there is less than a 0.1% chance that you experience a negative event following a dry needling treatment when it is performed by a trained professional. And in the rare chance that you do, there are almost never any long-term implications. The study did also find that it is not uncommon to experience some mild bruising or bleeding following a dry needling treatment. However, these resolve quickly, and again, there aren't really any long-term consequences. So, great news, dry needling is safe, but does it hurt? Out of the 20,000 people studied in the Boyce et al. paper, only 6% reported the treatment as painful, and only 3% reported any lasting pain following the treatment. From my personal experience with dry needling, the worst part about the treatment is often the anticipation. And once things are all said and done, it's a lot more tolerable than you would expect. In addition, the results can be pretty great. All in all, there does seem to be a point to including dry needling as part of your health management. The research supports the technique as effective, especially when used in combination with other forms of physical therapy. Despite the often intimidating nature of dry needling, Patients report that it's far more comfortable than they had originally anticipated. And lastly, dry needling seems to be safe in the vast majority of situations. However, to make sure it's safe for you, be sure to have a discussion with your healthcare provider. If you learned something new or just enjoyed the content of this video, please make the effort to click the like button, as this really does help out our channel. To be sure you don't miss a video that's relevant to you, please click the subscribe button. If you've had acupuncture or dry needling treatments before, let us know about your experience in the comments below. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and thanks for watching.